NFL rookies under the most pressure. Minnesota Vikings quarterback J.J. McCarthy has way too much talent and an inferior competition not to take the field and ball out. We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast. Cover your favorite draft prospects. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout, senior draft analyst, and thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout for being our everyday. So you know I got to kick this intro to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Keep talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, the other side to this dynamic duel that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, where we're your number one source, man, for everything NFL draft content, the best draft content out there. I want to say shout out to our everydayers. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, man. We we, we do this for you guys, man. It's, it's draft season 24-7, 365 around here. DP, we're talking about rookies, rookies that are under the most pressure, right? We talked about J.J. McCarthy. I have a couple guys that we're going to name off. It's going to be some very interesting situations, but before we get into that, DP, why don't you hit him with our title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. JJ McCarthy, Keith, and I said it in the opening. For me, the reason why he is the rookie with the most one of the, one of the rookies with uh, the most pressure on him, in my opinion, is the path to the field isn't great. Like it, it isn't uh, restricted. You got Sam Darnold in front of you, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Sam Donald gets two, three games at the most, and it depends on how he plays. If Sam Donald is playing good football, which I don't know who really believes that's going to be the case, Keith, if he's playing good football, then sure, you keep J.J. McCarthy off the field. And But if he's not playing good football, you got to play J.J. McCarthy. And one thing you always say, Keith, situations for quarterbacks. I think we just talked about it. I can't remember which quarterback we discussed it about. He was like, man, uh, oh, Bo Nix. He was like, well... I would want to start Bo Nix because it's not a good situation. We mm-hmm. said pre-draft, JJ, like not JJ McCarthy, but the Minnesota Vikings at the time, before you know, um, we saw what the Chicago Bears were going to do with that ninth pick and getting another wide receiver. The Minnesota Vikings was arguably the best landing spot for any of the rookie quarterbacks. Yep. So when I look at JJ McCarthy, you have Sam Darnold, who's not going to give you a lot of resistance. And I wouldn't be surprised. We get to camp. And the beat reporters are saying, man, this is a very close situation that we have unfolding here. What's the old adage? If the rookie is close to the vet, you start the rookie typically. But I think you, Baker, may feel this thing where you allow Sam Donald to play the first two, the three games, the same way the Browns did before they started Baker. You allow uh, Donald to play the first two, three games, let him get that out, out the way. And then J.J. McCarthy starts. But when J.J. McCarthy walks into this offense, you have um, Aaron Jones. TJ Hawkinson will be back eventually. But you got Jordan Addison. You have G- uh, Justin Jefferson, right? You have a good offensive line. You got one of the best play callers and head coaches in the league, in my opinion, and Kevin O'Connell. So my question, then you got one of the best defensive mind and defensive coordinators to kind of help play complementary football mm-hmm. for you. And Brian Flores in that defense, who they've added some pieces Two uh, and some youth and some very key position, edge, corner, stuff like that. Why wouldn't JJ McCarthy be able to go out there and at worst be a more physically gifted version of Brock Purdy? Like, I need you to go out there, and I'm not saying you lead us to the to the playoffs and we 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 unseat the San Francisco 49ers and I'm not saying no crazy stuff like that. I'm just saying you should be able to go out here and we should not lose. We, we should win more than at least eight games with you as a starter, in my honest opinion. Yes, you're a rookie, but outside of being a rookie, what excuse do you have? Right. Now, and, and I mean, you should be able to put yourself in a fringe playoff type situation, right, with a rookie quarterback, if not make the playoffs, right? And I know that's what Vikings fans are going to want to hear is that we made the right. playoffs. So it's a... Um, it's definitely, like you said, a situation you have Aaron Jones, you have a running game. So there, there's definitely a lot of things around there. DP, rookies, pressure. 
I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels, the number two overall pick. And the reason is the the Washington Commanders situation, them as a franchise, right? It appears to be a very, like, at times dysfunctional. Maybe you could use the word volatile, right? But drafting Jaden Daniels, him being a mobile quarterback, right? Why do you see his pressure? The RG3 comps are going to come, right? And then he's going to – he's probably the immediate starter right off the bat, right? You have a Washington fan base, which is a, a, a rather big fan base, right? So when – when and this is the the part that I always talk about. When he – if he fails or – I don't want to say fails, but, like, if he doesn't play well, right, like week one, two, and three, it, it's going to be out loud, right? Because everybody's going to be paying attention to that media market. When he messes up, it's going to be in front – everybody right and that's just a lot of pressure and then people are going to automatically make the assumption right you can you know that week one he go out there he throw interception see told you Jane daniels can't process he's a bad quarterback he's not good right and it, so and, and it could just snowball right it could be a snowball effect just because how big that media market is and then also too everything we just talked about the minnesota vikings dp with as far as all of the the buffers that the Vikings have right for a rookie quarterback with the head coach and then, you know, the running game and then the wide receivers and, you know, the, the tight end and TJ Hawkinson, right. In the situation, the commanders don't have the same exact situation, right? Like theirs is, is not as high level, right? Like it's, it's, it's Terry McLaurin, right? You're trying to get Jahan Dotson going and then wide receiver three, four and five, still trying to figure that out. The running back situation is, is decent, not, great right they what they have austin eckler and brian robinson so you know hopefully that can be a, a solid situation the offensive line situation still trying to figure that part out so it's not the same situation that it is in minnesota right so he's stepping in a, a situation where i would say it's not as great but there's a whole lot more eyes on it um and if you yeah. fail you end up failing out loud and then that's pressure right there especially also the nfc east being in that division right where you're facing the Dak Prescott. You're facing Daniel Jones and the Giants. You're facing Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. Yeah. I'm with you. Like that is a. I, I didn't even crazy enough when when I thought when, when the segment came up. I didn't even think about Jaden Daniels, even though he was the second overall pick. It didn't <laughs> really cross my mind. But you're right because even I have said like you know the projection for him probably is R, that RG three type of rookie year. Not, well, let me let me let me rephrase that. Like not like not offensive rookie year, but just the way RG three was able to like the way he was used, right? The mm -hmm. the the deep passing game, the explosive plays, the where you know then you get the 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 design QB run game going, things of that nature with Jaden Daniels. He has that same type of track running style, straight line speed. Yep. The where if you do not contain the edge, and he gets to the sideline and he turns it up, and those shoulders are parallel to the to the touch to the end zone. It's probably a house call if you don't you know close if you don't close in on them quick enough, right? But I think you know, of course, RG three had a stronger arm than Jaden coming out and everything like that. But no, I, I like that a lot because, like you said. And then the situation is different because people are lower on Jahan Dotson now. It's crazy because mm -hmm. as a rookie, people love them. And, and, and right. just I, I one year, him. one year, like you know, Sam. I think I'm not blaming Sam Howell for it though. You know what I mean? But it was kind of weird. Like they never really got going together. Like as, as they they never really meshed. You know, and so I, I think with <laughs> the command, and like I said, at the end of the day, the commanders are uh, they're a bloodthirsty fan base. They want success. They they feel like every like things are new now, new ownership, new like everything, right? Like the stuff, the past is a past, right? Even though you got Dan Quinn with the uh shirt with the old, you know, I'm like, <laughs> come on, DQ. Like you can like that, let's not bring let's not bring the negativity into the into the space right now for the for the team. You riding on the high, but I, it's gonna be interesting to see how this unfolds for them, Keith, especially. Also, with the Cliff Kingsbury calling plays, you know what I mean. Like, will we see a guy that's just dialed into what the defense is doing and everything else, or are we gonna see a guy that we question it again? Like, should you even be in this league as a coach? Yeah, no, it's it's. I think there's there's certain segment of people, and that's what happens when you play for these big franchises, right? Um, they're waiting just to be like, oh, it's the same old commanders, right? Like they're waiting yeah. for that moment. And so I think that's why he's under so much pressure is because the, the failure part of it in which he, he's going to mess up. He's a rookie, right? All rookies yeah. mess up. Um, the Hall of Fame ones mess up. 
Uh, and, but you just know that when he messes up, it's going to be a lot louder um, because of the market that he's in. So that's why I say I, I definitely think with the pressure. But DP, let's keep this thing going and flowing, man. Coming up in the next segment, man, we're going to talk about a couple defensive guys that have some pressure on them. They have to show up and show out so their teams could be able to perform well in the playoffs. Guys, let me help you take the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets because I know in the past it's been very frustrating. But let me introduce you to Game Time with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets. The NFL schedule release was last week, and guys, there's some high profile games that I think we all want to attend. But I know for me, I love uh, both quarterbacks for the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. And on September the 8th at 1 p.m., the Texans, C.J. Stroud, the Texans and C.J. Stroud go into Indianapolis to play the Colts and Anthony Richardson. They have tickets on the game time app right now for as cheap as $52, guys. So, again, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Duval County, country, whatever it's called. I'm going to these <laughs> Jacksonville key, Jacksonville Jaguars, Keith, and for me, I'm going to your neck of the woods as well. Mason Smith, a guy that we were both high on his potential and ceiling. I think, but when he was selected, we both were like, man, that feels a little bit like a reach because he hasn't been the same guy since his freshman year. And then, of course, over at the Draft Network doing NFL evals and roster assessments, I had the Jacksonville Jaguars. And one of the things that I've noticed with them is the cornerback position is still a concern. And there were cornerbacks on the board when Mason Smith was selected. Grant, they grabbed, they, they grabbed Jerry and, um, Jones from Florida State. But I think he's slotted to be like a, a nickel right nickel now. You know, I think safety hybrid. He yeah. he looks like a guy that can play outside. Like I think he can he can live outside. But nonetheless, they got Ronald Darby and Tyson Campbell as outside guys. They brought Darnell Savage in and 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 also Jerry and Jones would be the nickel. Mason Smith, to, in my opinion, now they brought in Eric Armstead. Loved that move. Roy Robertson, Harris, and Adam got got this. Uh, Gotsis and Devon Hamilton. I don't think those guys should keep Mason Smith off the field in no way, in no way, shape, or form. I think the pressure is going to be on for me. We're watching the guy where again, it's it's not the talent in, in the player, it's what you could have gotten in that position. Could you have gotten Mason Smith a couple picks later or a round later? Possibly, right? Like, did was this a reach situation? Because Trent Balky likes his big long arm, athletic, physically gifted players. We saw, uh, and I'm not going to question it because we saw, I, I did the, the film eval. Trayvon Walker took the step he, he took in 2023. Yep. If he takes that next step, he's 10, 12, 13 sack type of guy. And he's a really good run defender as well. So again, that was a pick everybody questioned. I'm not going to, because that's starting to hit now. I can't even question Trent Balky in the way that he wants to attack the draft and the D-line. But I do think there's a lot of pressure on Mason Smith to kind of come out and be an early contributor. Because, again, in your division, J uh, you got to deal with, you know, Tajay Spears, Tony Pollard in the backfield uh, in Tennessee. You got to deal with Travis Etienne. No, Travis Etienne is on your same team. Sorry. You got to deal with uh, Jordan. Uh, not Jordan. Jonathan Taylor with the Colts, and then I think it's Joe Mixon with uh, the Houston Texans. So you got all the teams in your division will run the ball in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form, but then you also got Will Levis, C.J. Stroud, and then Anthony Richardson. The interior pressure is going to be big, and if teams are going to double-team or try and double-team Eric Armstead or whatever, try to take him away on the interior, like you got to be able to get that rookie going. So I think Mason Smith uh, has a lot of pressure on him to to go out there and just be an impact player early on. Yeah, I, I think that's a good that's a good call out DP for somebody that you know wasn't in the first round. I think when he went in the second round, um, but it's a good call out, like you said, and just the development part of it. Um, you, you want to be optimistic because of the Trayvon Walker situation and Trayvon still being a younger guy, being able to communicate with him, show him the ropes a little bit, you know, about how to get the job done, and then body profile wise, right. 
I don't want to say they're similar, but they're they're close, right? They're both six five, three hundred pound guys that's that can move, that's athletic. Um, and so it's just about just about developing Mason Smith. And I think the exciting part for him could be is like, hey, this might be my first time I've been healthy in three years, right? Like I've I've had a real go at it in a complete offseason to get the job done. DP. I'm going with, I'm going to D town. I'm going to Dallas. I'm going to offensive tackle Tyler Guyton um, under a lot of pressure. Why he's moving from the right side to the left side. Dak Prescott, Jerry Jones, the Dallas Cowboys, big light prime time. You're replacing a hall of fame offensive tackle in Tyron Smith, right? Now you're the new starting left tackle for the Dallas Cowboys DP. Um, That's a lot of pressure, man, because you know, one thing that, like it was, and it's similar to what happened with Mozzie Smith, right? Mozzie Smith didn't play well. It was all over headlines, right? It's like, oh, what's wrong with their rookie defensive tackle? Like most defensive tackles don't get criticized like that. But when you play for the Dallas Cowboys, you're yeah. under the spotlight all day, every day. So, and then I look at the significance of the position that he's playing, right? So everybody's going to want to have a take on Dak Prescott. So everybody's going to watch Dak Prescott. And what they're going to do, they're going to watch this offensive line. So every single rep that you put out there, um, you know, if you're Tyler Guyton, it's going to be under the microscope. And if, if people feel like you're the reason why Dak Prescott is not playing, it's going to be on ESPN. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be on all these shows, right? You're going to be the guy highlighted when they're doing the film breakdowns. It's going to be you. So I look at Tyler Guyton and I say, you know what? That's a lot of pressure for a young man. And then also you, you're, you're doing it switching positions. Right. Like they, you're, you're moving from the right side to the left side. That's your first experience playing offensive tackle. You're the blind side protector for probably the most controversial quarterback in the NFL as far as, you know, just what people, you know, how people feel about him. Right. Is either they love him or they hate him for whatever reason with Dak Prescott. Um, but you're the blind side protector for him. So it's, it's I, I look at that and I say, you know what, it's definitely Tyler Guy. Yeah, no, and that's a name that that came across my mind too. I was like, after I picked Mason Smith, I was like, man, Tyler Guyton, like, there's a like, and it's literally because you're you're expected to start out the gate. Like, there's, I don't think there's another tackle on the team at left tackle that's gonna be playing left tackle that's gonna keep you from starting as the blind side protector for Dak Prescott. And again, like you know, with the with the different defensive lines that you have to face in the NFC East, and like I said, the pressure. Right at the end of the day. Dak Prescott is such a much maligned quarterback. If you take that darn star off his helmet, people don't feel the same way about him. They're not as passionate about Dak Prescott. They don't feel like he can't win because he's with if he's a if he's a Jacksonville Jaguar, it people don't look at him the same. They're like, man, Dak Prescott's a good quarterback and he's done some good things in this league. But because he plays for Jerry Jones's team, it's like, man, he can't get it done. We need to get a new quarterback. All the stuff like that, right? And it's like that. It's going to be like that for Tyler Guy, like yep. Ezekiel Elliott. Like instead of appreciating all that Zeke has done in his career, it's well, Dak. I mean, the Cowboys should have never paid Zeke. Like he he wasn't worth the money. It was like, did we not watch him carry an offense with a rookie? Court? Like, all right, that's fine. Like, say what you want, but he's one of the best running backs, and at points, arguably the best running back in the league. Uh, especially early, you know, early in his career when he was healthy and he was a little bit younger. So that that star on the helmet is definitely going to put that spotlight on Tyler Guyton early and often in the season, Keith, because all it takes is third and 10 sack give up by Tyler Guyton. And you're going to have fans, media members, everybody on his back, like not understanding Hey, he's still a rookie that's mm -hmm. also flipping sides that context is going to go completely out the window for the young man. And I hate to see it. Yep. No, hundred percent. And so it's, it's going to be a rather interesting conversation, but at least he gets to work on this in training camp. Right. And we talked about this. He yes. has to see Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence every single day. So he, he is it's definitely going to be a baptism by fire situation for him. But DP, let's keep going, man. What do we have up? We have another duo, right? I think you're going with Joe out. I'm going back to D-Town, a different D-Town, though, with a with a defensive back, man. We have this conversation. So coming up next, man, we're going to talk about our third set of guys who are under the most pressure. Today's episode is sponsored by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Guys, it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. 
Again, as a new customer, if you have a winning bet of $5, you get $150 back in bonus bets. Guys, that's $150 bucks as, new, as a new customer to bet on everything you'd like. Spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. This is a deal that you just can't miss or pass up. So how do you avoid missing out or passing up on this deal, you ask? Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our every day is Keith. Yes, I am going back to those Los Angeles Chargers, going back to the West Coast. Offensive tackle with fifth pick in the 2024 NFL Draft class, Joe Alton. We just talked about it with Tyler Guyton, right? That that challenge of flipping from one side to the other. Joe Alton's going under, he's about to undergo the same thing. He's going to the right side. And I think the reason why it's a lot of things in play for me why I picked Joe Alt, right? The 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 pre-draft hype and notion of how you know great of a player he was, which he was an outstanding player, like mm-hmm. and how he was head and shoulders above Olu. JC, all these other you know tackles in a loaded tackle group. But then also now you're going, you're not going to a situation where there's a question at quarterback. You're going to one of the most protected quarterbacks in the media and fan space in the entire NFL, Justin Herbert. If you remember, guys, again, there was a 2022 season, 2023 playoffs. They lose, uh, they blow a lead against uh, Trevor Lawrence and the Jags. Trevor Lawrence threw like five interceptions that game and still won. And you're like, how is that possible, right? How many people got on Twitter and blamed everybody else for that loss but the quarterback, right? Justin Herbert, I I love the talent that he is, but he is very protected. He's kind of a golden boy in the sense. If you go out there and you don't – and Max Crosby has three and a half sacks, the first game you see Max Crosby, it's going to be some conversations of, man – because what was – what was Keith – and you you were higher on all than I was. We both had him as a high first round grade. But you were higher on what was the thing? Like, man, his floor is high. Like he should be able to walk in and be a really good pass protector right at the gate. Cause that was his game. Like the run game was a little bit of a question, but the pass protection was like, all right, he's gonna be fine. But you're gonna have to deal with, you know, George Carlathis. You're gonna have to deal with Max Crosby. Not really sure who is in Denver. So I can't even, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I'm not even gonna do that. But you might have to see Tyree Wilson, too, if they start flipping sides where Tyree Wilson and I forget the other young man they have. Um, I think it's Kuntz. I think it's his name is the edge rusher from from the Raiders who was who, who was a dog who got after it in 2023. <laughs> so for me, it's like, all right, you and then 14 with with uh, Jim Harbaugh who wants to run the ball. Mm-hmm. You got to start moving some bodies off the, off the ball, man. That was not a strength of his game in college in terms of being even though he's six, seven, six, eight. He wasn't a mauler. He wasn't a. A body mover, you know what I mean? He was more of a, a directional blocker, more of a washdown seal guy. If you're not setting good edges and, and creating run lanes consistently and moving some people off the ball and bringing that power element, if they want to run power, there's going to be some questions. And I think to, to pick him at five overall, where they probably could have traded back and still got him. It's to me, I think there's a lot of pressure on because Rashawn Slater, we know what he's going to be. You can't be the weak link of this offensive line. Not saying that he will, but you can't be. Yeah, I, I look at it from the perspective. I think the most interesting part is obviously number five overall pick. Obviously, I felt like it was deserving. I almost gave him, you know, like our highest grade um, that you can give a prospect coming out, right? Like just in the highest yeah. category. Um, But I, I think some of that becomes a gray area when he flips sides right go from left to right right to left like we just talked about it with tyler guyton um some it becomes a little bit of a gray area. so you you almost have to see right and the thing with scouting is that you want to know exactly what you're getting i think knowing that they're going to flip them i no longer know exactly what i'm getting right and, and it's, it's going to be a process and it's going to be an interesting situation um you know just with him moving from the left side to the right side i think it will be good but i agree with you right that that's a pressurized situation to be able to have the flip sides justin herbert jim harbaugh that storyline that entire conversation <clears throat> i'm gonna go with dp i talked about right being in d-town i'm going with first round pick cornerback from from alabama Terion 
Arnold. And the reason I say is this, that you're going to a highly talented team, first of all, right? A team that was on the cusp of making a Super Bowl last year, right? Just a couple defensive plays um, away from making the Super Bowl. It appears the way this roster and depth chart has broken down, you're going to play. You're you're probably going to start as a rookie. Um, and so that's a pressure situation. You're playing for a talented team where the expectation is to win, like, early on, early and often, right? And so you have to go in there. You have to be productive. Then this is the other part. The Detroit Lions have a good football team, so they score points. So what's going to happen is that other teams are going to have to throw the football to keep up with the Detroit Lions, which means you're going to have to make more plays, right? So I, I look at Terry Arnold, and I, I, I like the player. I love the player, right? And I think it's a really good fit, but that's a pressure situation to be right there as a rookie, and you just get thrown into the fire and like, hey, we got to rock and roll. And then you talked about this division, DP. Chicago Bears, you're talking about Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, you're talking about Roma Dunze, the Minnesota Vikings, you're talking about Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, and then the Green Bay Packers, they have a trio of guys, young guys also, right, and Dante Van Wicks, Christian Watson, uh, Romeo Dobbs, right, and it, it's that's 10 wide receivers just in your division. Mm -hmm. right that's 10 guys just in your division that you have that you're going to have to see twice a year plus the other the other guys on your schedule and so you're in and the thing is with those teams it's not like they have just a number one and they don't have a number two you see what i'm saying so yeah. like you're like they all have good number twos like you're going to have to see if you don't see justin jefferson you're seeing jordan addison right if you don't see keenan allen you're seeing dj moore so it's it's a it's a, it's a crazy situation man it's going to be a lot of pressure and he's gonna have to show up and show out no, a hundred percent. That's that's going to be a gauntlet just in that division. Yeah, like you said, alone. Yeah. Like that's a gauntlet. And luckily, you know, coming from Alabama, the SEC, and everything, he's battle tested. But man, like, and I think, I, and what I love about him is, is, is this is a such a tough minded young man that wears like remember, um, young man out of Clemson, Andrew Booth, right? Battled some injuries, and then he got healthy. And I think his first game back. They threw him on Stefan Diggs and he got cooked, Keith. Like he got like it was a bad game. And it was like, why would you put a rookie or a guy who had who's like he's finally healthy? He's ready to go. And his first action but it was like, well, we didn't really have much of a choice. Right. And it's like that's kind of the Detroit Lions situation where if if Terry Arnold's really the best corner on this team, even better than Emmanuel Mosley and Car Carlton Davis. You don't have a choice. You got to play him. and got to play him, um, you know, only some of these best guys. And I think. He's going to be I think he's going to fare uh, pretty I think he's going to fare well mentally. But at the same time, that's a gauntlet, because like you said, then you look at the rest of the schedules like, man, you got even more receivers <laughs> that you got to handle and yeah. deal with. And it's going to be a lot of fun to kind of watch the evolution of the season for him. Uh, and I have the Detroit Lions in my region, so I'm going to absolutely be tapped in to see how Terry on the goals from game to game, snap to snap and see how he develops. Yep, no, 100%. So we'll see how that goes, man. But I thought this was a good show, DP, talking about these rookies in these situations. They're going to play high leverage moments, high level situations. But they, you know what they say, right? To whom much is given, much is much required. Is much is required, baby. So, DP, that wraps up another show, man, of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. I want to say shout out to every day. Is thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day, man. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Code. That right there, my guy, Mr. Damian Parson. You can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to say, man, y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Sorry for being our everyday. It's on tomorrow's show. We're getting into impact rookie wide receivers, Jermaine Burton, Roman Wilson, and we got one more on tap for tomorrow. So come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.